Hello everyone. This talk is called Twilio Console, a large-scale migration to Jamstack. My name is Harrison Harnish, and I'm a principal software engineer at Twilio. I'm also the tech lead on the console team. And if you've got any questions or want to reach out, feel free to reach out over Twitter. So an overview of what this talk is all about. We're going to talk about what the Twilio console is. We'll talk about some of the history of the console and some of the challenges that's had over time. And then we'll talk about the new console and the impact that's had on the company. So first off, what is the Twilio console? It's a single page application that enables customers to interact with the Twilio platform. They can build, configure, and monitor different products. So let's go over some of the history of the console. This goes quite a few years back, but initially we only had a few products. And there was one team that was responsible for building everything. It had a relatively simple navigation structure as well. And some, uh, some old screenshots can show some of the iterations that the legacy consoles had. So you can see at the top, that's the oldest iteration. Um, relatively simple, everything fit on, on one line. And then a little bit in, in the middle, uh, some time goes by, uh, some new products are added. You can see that now a sub navigation is needed. And then by the end, um, we've got drop downs, we've got sub navs. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to navigate around the console at this point. So things are getting pretty complex. But you could imagine that single team got overwhelmed uh, and the approach hit its scaling limits pretty quickly. So let's talk about the next iteration of the con console and fast forward a few years. So now we've got dozens of products and we've got dozens of teams working independently and navigations become relatively complex and to the point where pinning and unpinning pinning products uh, becomes necessary. You can see that somebody clicks on that drawer, it opens up and you can see all the Toyo products and you can pin and unpin uh, so you have a group of products that are relevant to your use case. Uh, this allows customers to focus on maybe things that they care about. Some people might care about messaging or SMS, and then other companies uh, might care about video or something like that. So let's talk about the scale of the console. There's roughly four and a half monthly page views, and customers consume roughly 480 gigabytes of monthly bandwidth. And we've got customers in over 200 countries. So this isn't a staggering amount of traffic, but there is something interesting going on in that Twilio has a global presence. Now let's talk about the complexity of this system. There are 30 products that are being independently built by 30 different teams um, with over 300 engineers working in the same space. So you could imagine there's a lot of organizational challenges that come along with this. So let's go back to the technical side and talk about the, uh, the high level architecture of this system. So the index.html was server side rendered and it injects content in a couple of different ways. And that content being those different products that those different teams are working on. So the first way that content's injected is server side. So it's server side rendered using something like PHP or maybe Java or Scala. Um, the second way is that server side rendered, uh, the script tags are server side rendered and they're injected client side. So you could imagine these are things like jQuery applications or more recently, the, the React applications. So essentially what we built was a micro front-end architecture that's stitched together on the back end. This micro front-end architecture allowed us to bring in console 1.0 uh, applications, things that were server-side rendered with PHP, uh, and then also provide a path forward to building applications in the new style. Uh, think your React applications. And of course, this didn't come without its issues. Now, one of the big ones was that the first render always had to go through the US. 
uh, that you could remember that server side render that was going on. Uh, and also we've got the customers in, in 200 different countries. You could imagine that if you're in the Asia Pacific region, console probably feels pretty slow because you have to make multiple hops over the Pacific Ocean. First for that initial server side render. And then if, you've, if you're not doing a server side render application, uh, say you're building something in React and you have to fetch some more data, you're going to have to make another uh, hop over the Pacific Ocean. So customers feel that every time they use the console. Now, another thing to compl complicate things uh, further was that let's say you're working within two different products, say phone numbers and the messaging app. Now, those are two pretty related uh, products, but they have different, um, different script tags that they need to be server-side rendered. So anytime you cross the product boundary, you need to do a full page refresh. And what we were seeing our customers do was leave multiple tabs open in order to not pay that penalty. Now, another issue that we observed was that teams had to share development environments. Now, you could imagine this could become a bottleneck because uh, groups of people have to share a common resource in order to verify their code. Um, when they make a change on a branch and they want to make sure that works with the latest version of dev, um, they have to, to say, hey, I need to grab the dev environment. Um, is anybody else using it? And that, that becomes a bottleneck, uh, and it's pretty significant. Now, one of the other big issues is that in this system, teams have near complete autonomy. And you could imagine those 30 different teams are having to solve a lot of different problems themselves. They're doing a lot of meta work around solving problems for the customers. Uh, things like having to implement their own CI CD pipelines, having to make decisions on what request libraries to use. Uh, there's a lot of choices and, and, and thought that has to go into building an application that's going to serve your customers over time, uh, rather than building business logic. And of course, dozens of teams independently eventually hit their limits too. So enter the new console. So the new console is a Jamstack application hosted on Netlify. And what that means is that instead of having to send that first initial render for index.html and static assets to the US, we can serve all of that from a CDN. So we can meet the customers where they are. And we've also changed over to a mono repo rather than lots of uh, different repos that are independent. What this has allowed us to do is consolidate on, on tooling um, we now have a shared CI CD pipeline that runs everything from unit tests to end to end tests. Um, we can do all kinds of checks that teams get for free just by pulling their code into the mono repo. And another thing that we've done is use iframes. Yes, iframes uh, in order to pull the console 2.0 code into the new console. And what this allows us to do is have an incremental uh, migration path for teams. So we can start realizing the value early on rather than uh, one style of migration, which is to migrate the whole thing and then uh, switch that to, to customers. That style of mig migration tends to take years to uh, start to see value, and that can often be too long. Now, what teams are migrating towards is something that we're calling application packages. And what you can think of those are, they're basically uh, code split JavaScript bundles that are asynchronously loaded with suspense and they're wrapped in error boundaries. And what this allows us to do is isolate applications uh, from teams from one another. That way, if you, if you have one team that rolls uh, a, a bad code change, it's not going to take down the whole console. It's just going to take down the one part of the application. Now, this is very different from the legacy console, uh, so the console 2.0 because uh, there were no error boundaries. And if something fails on the page, it could also make things like the navigation disappear. So uh, there's a lot of issues like that where um, that, that we've solved with this strategy. And another thing that this allows us to do as well is where the error boundaries are, we can send er stack traces uh, and errors to the correct team. So 
if something breaks, it's really easy to uh, to figure out where things are breaking. Now, here's a couple of screenshots from the new console. Uh, we talked about an application package. Here's an example, this Explore products page, which shows those 30 products, uh, 30 plus products. Um, this is a new application package. And uh, this is something that's loaded in a, uh, loaded asynchronously as a bundle. And now let's say you clicked on uh, the buy a number page and phone numbers. This is loaded from an iframe. And these two, uh, these two applications can live side by side. And at some point when the phone numbers team is ready to migrate this page, they can do so, uh, and they can do just one page at a time. So they can migrate the buy a numbers page, then they can migrate the active numbers page, uh, piece by piece, uh, smaller chunks. So let's talk about the impact that this has had on the company. So the first one is increased collaboration, uh, specifically from preview deploys. They allow for quicker validation on code reviews. And what we do is when somebody changes code and generates a pull request, we, we generate a preview deployment and we link that preview deployment uh, on the pull request. So when you are validating somebody's code change and reviewing the code, you can be sure that it works because it's using the, pretty much the same pipeline as what you're gonna see in production. Another way that this has uh, started to increase co collaboration is we can get direct feedback now from product and design. Um, before, it was, it was a lot more difficult to get feedback because you either had to share that development environment or set it up locally. Uh, in product and design folks, at least at Twilio, um, they don't always have that local de development environment ready to go. So they are often relying on engineers in order to uh, get some of that feedback and, and give them feedback on their, on their code changes. And we've also just started to play around with a tool called FeaturePeak, uh, which is an excellent feature uh, from Netlify. And we're, we're seeing designers um, start to give us feedback because you can take screenshots and you can annotate them and also uh, give feedback that way. And that ends up right in the pull request. So the next big one is performance improvements. So now we see global improvements on time to first byte. Uh, a lot of that has to do with that first render path. Um, one region that comes to mind specifically, uh, in Singapore, we were seeing roughly one to two seconds for the time to first byte in the console 2.0 architecture. And in the new architecture, we're seeing somewhere between 30 and 60. And a lot of that has to do with the CDN deployment um, strategy. When it's coming from a CDN, it's being served a lot closer to our customers are. And we're also seeing significant improvements on initial page load time. Part of that, yes, is the time to first byte, but it's also got a lot to do with uh, the way that we've split up the code. So uh, we're, the initial page load is, very, uh, is a lot smaller because we don't need to load, say, all of the settings and functionality pages for a given product. We get just what we need. And the last one is we've eliminated the full page refresh. Uh, with the Jamstack architecture, we've got our rights, or, or our, um, we're, we're handling things routes client side rather than server side. So when somebody crosses a product domain, they just go fetch a new uh, application package bundle rather than having to full re refresh on the page. We've added shared governance here as well. Um, so if you think of the console 1.0 model, we've got one team that's making all the decisions. And then if you imagine the pendulum swings to complete autonomy, now we've got lots of different teams being able to do what they need. Think of this shared governance model not as somewhere in between. Um, it allows us to make decisions, especially decisions that impact multiple teams and sometimes everybody um, as a group. And what, the way that we do that is we identify key stakeholders and then we have them inform uh, from different perspectives uh, 
how those decisions would impact them positively or negatively. And then we document those decisions as we go. Now, the last one, we've seen increased development velocity. Now, teams were quite often shipping weekly, um, sometimes less often than that, but they were shipping in bulk. So lots of commits going out. Um, in the new architecture, we're seeing small changes that are being delivered multiple times a day. Uh, it's pretty common for teams to be deploying 10 to 15 times a day. Now we've also got preview deployments, which are effectively a near infinite number of staging environments. And that has uh, eliminated the bottleneck where teams uh, need to share that dev environment. It's, it's also uh, allowed more people to get involved in the code review process. It's, it's pretty regular to see multiple plus ones or maybe a plus one and somebody else gives feedback uh, because more people um, are able to review the code. And really at the end of the day, this has allowed more focus on solving problems for our customers. So to close this one out, uh, I want to leave a couple thoughts here. So first off, the Jamstack architecture has caused a complete shift in how Toyo thinks about front-end applications. And we're seeing some of the effects of that in that teams outside of the console team are now planning their migrations over to the Jamstack architecture. Imagine internal tools teams, um, they're planning their migrations. Also teams outside of the console that have customer facing applications, uh, they're, they're planning their migrations as well. We're also seeing a shift in how platforms are delivered to customers. We're, we think more about the global customer rather than people centralized in a given location. And by default, because Jamstack breaks things out into static assets and is served through a CDN, uh, that's something you don't have to think about as much anymore. So that's a big shift. And then the last thing, we have more time to focus on our customers now. There's a lot less meta work that we're doing and we're able to get down to the core business logic. And this hits very close to home for the Twilio magic value of wearing the customer's shoes. Just wanted to say thanks for joining the talk and enjoy the conference. Sit, Jamstack, sit. Woof, woof. Good boy.